So, hey, guys. So, for those of you who don't know who I am, um, as Amber uh, so professionally stated, my official title is Reverend Dr. Danielle Patterson Winningham. Most people just call me coach, right? Because that that's what I do. Is, that's what I am. And for the last 12 years, I've been in this digital marketplace, primarily helping women build profitable online businesses. I say profitable because the average woman-owned business makes less than $50,000 a year, which is abysmal compared to the amount of money that's being made out here and compared to the amount of revenue that's possible. It's a lot of different reasons that occurs, but one of the primary reasons um, that that occurs is because, you know, it takes money to make money. How many of you have heard that before? Say me in the chat. Uh, with women, we have so many competing priorities when it comes to what to do with our money. We got to, uh, you know, take care of the kids and take care of our parents. In fact, women are 80 to 90% of the world's caregivers. So we're taking care of everybody with less because we make on average 60 to 70% less than our Caucasian male counterparts. No matter what race you are, woman, you make less than a man, period. I don't care who you are. I'm a former J.P. Morgan Chase vice president. So I know all of this all too well of going into a position, doing more, being expected to do more and making way less. Um, and so it's really, prosperity is a pandemic for women. It is. And the mass majority of people in abject poverty are women. We have so many worth issues as it relates to money. We don't feel we're worthy. We don't feel like, you know, we can amass, um, you know, staggering amounts of money. But it also translates into startup capital. And I wanted to, because I specialize in a lot of areas of startup capital, because there's just so much money out there. And I want to show you guys an article before we leave of how they talk about there are billions of dollars in startup capital for minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, veteran-owned businesses, LGBTQ uh, they call us historically underutilized groups. They call us hugs, okay? And there's billions of dollars out there for us, but the mass majority of us, because our believability factor is so low. What do I mean by that? I mean that we don't believe this money is for us. We don't even get in the line. So me and my, my community, we have a saying every line, every time. That means that no matter what application is on the table, if we qualify, we're going to get in and we're going to apply and we're going to look to see if we qualify, which a lot of people will look at one application and because it doesn't qualify for them, they never look again. But that's what we're going to go through today. Our grants uh right for you before you make any assumptions and miss out on millions of dollars. There's one of my favorite books. It's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. And in that book, he, he talks about don't assume anything. That's one of the four agreements. Never make assumptions, right? And I'm sure all of us have heard, you know, when, when you're making assumptions, you make something out of you and me. I, I know y'all know what I'm saying. Without me having to say it, then y'all be like the Reverend was on that custom. So don't make assumptions. This money is out there. If you are a woman in business, there is some path for you to, to, to take. And I, today I hope to dispel some of the misgivings and the misnomers about your ability to be able to take advantage of this money. So thank you, Amber, for having me. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, jump in. So if you're anything like me, when I initially heard the word grant, that word said to me nonprofit. It immediately said to me nonprofit, and it was years before I looked at it again. Uh, fast forward to right before the pandemic, me trying to help my clients grow their brands to national, international level. I was like, okay, ladies, we got to start looking beyond your own pocket because your own po pocket is not enough to hire a team, have a marketing budget, scale your business, do all, br bring in your automation, do all the things that are necessary in a digital marketplace to be profitable. So I was speaking at an event and they talked about grants for for-profit businesses. 
which this is about five years ago, first I ever heard of a for-profit grant. What's one of those things where awareness, you know, some people call it the law of attraction, you know, some people, it, the scientific term is reticular activation. And that means when you know something exists and you start to look for it, it's there. It's, it, and, and I'll give you an example. If you get a white Toyota today, the minute you drive off the lot, you start to see white Toyotas everywhere. Well, that's your brain saying, now that I know a white Toyota exists, I see them everywhere I go. So once we knew they existed, we started to see all of these amazing grants and pitch uh, opportunities everywhere. And I wanted to educate my community into how to get it so that they could not only afford the advice and, and business consulting they needed from me, but they also had the marketing budgets and things uh, to do what they needed to do with the strategy I gave them. Uh, and so the short answer, if you're here, and the short answer to are grants available for me, the answer to that is yes. Grants are available for everyone. This is what y'all do though. I'm going to say that. And then at the end, you're going to still be at, well, what if I only have one leg? Grants are available for you. What if I'm international? Grants are available for you. What if I live in a hay house? Grants are available for you. Grants are so diverse in nature based on who's offering them that if you know specifically what you're looking for, then you're going to find some type of grant somewhere for you. So the short answer is yes, grants are for everyone. And in fact, Last week alone, we reviewed over a million dollars in grant opportunities. Last week, Botox giving away half a million dollars. I'll give you that link before we leave today. Um, Verizon giving away another half a million dollars. I'll make sure you guys get that link again before uh, you leave today. So there's all of these companies who want you to spend money with them. Let me point that out because the mass majority of these grants have something to do with women. And at some point, we have spent money. AT&T gave out millions of dollars last year. Some of y'all have AT&T for your cell phone service or your internet. You got Verizon giving away money. You've got Dell giving away money. You've got... Uh, so how many of these companies have you not heard of? You've probably heard of all of them, but did not know that they're giving away money. And what I tell my my team, what I tell my clients is, girl, they ain't doing nothing but giving you back what you done already sold into them. So get in line and apply because the mass number of people are going to say, oh, well, I'm not qualified and they're going to self-select themselves out. So one of the reasons that my community has won over a million dollars in startup capital in the last two years is that we get in every line every time. Because guess what? The more they ask you for the less people apply, the better your opportunities are winning. So the key to grants is knowing which grants are right for you and knowing what to say. That's it and that's all. I'm going to put a major scammer alert out there. If anybody contacts you and says, send me two or three, $400, and I'm going to guarantee you when they're lying. Grants are not ever, ever, ever guaranteed unless it's a government grant, which sometimes the government will call a contract a grant. They're granting you the opportunity to do the work. But a normal grant, think about it. If everybody could give $300 to get $30,000, like who would it, right? So that's a scam. And there's so many people out here who are scamming people, taking people's money, they never hear them again. So let discernment be your God. Everybody has discernment. There's a book called The Energy of Money by Dr. Maria Nima. And she talks about when we operate in our discernment, we never make a bad decision when it comes to money. When we operate out of frustration, desperation, that's when we start to make bad decisions when it comes to money. So the key is to know which grants are right for you. And I want you to look at grants as an essay contest. Everybody remember essay contest when you were in high school? That is exactly what a grant is. Your ability 
to tell your brand story, articulate your community impact, and your what you're going to do when you get the money is the key to winning grants. That's it. That's all. So again, in the last few years, I've helped my community get over a million dollars in grants. And then now we're starting to branch out to other funding, like crowdfunding, um, pitch decks, which is like a grant where you have to do an in-person um, uh, presentation. And they're even more lucrative than grants. And even less people are doing them. So if you can win five or 10 or $15,000 on a grant, you can win fifty, seventy-five, a hundred thousand dollars with a pitch contest. So let me stop real quick and just check my trap. Does everybody here need money in their business? I'm just checking. I always ask people that. I always want to make sure I'm talking to the right people. You know what I'm saying? Does everybody here? I need you to tell me in the chat. Does everybody here like know that they need money for a team? They need money for technology. Everybody here needs money for a marketing budget. You definitely need money for automation because, you know, newsflash women, we're not we're not superhero. We're not made out of Teflon. We break. We get tired. We get sick. And when you don't have residual income and you don't have automation, your business cannot continue when you get sick. So, okay, looks like I'm in the right place. Everybody needs money. Everybody needs money. So as a business coach, the primary thing I do is help people launch businesses, quit their jobs. I quit my own job making, you know, almost 200K a year. So I know how important it is to make the money so you can quit the job. But you cannot make the money if you don't invest the money. And most people don't realize that every every year I've made seven figures, I've invested $200,000 $250, to make a million dollars. Point blank, period. So you may say, well, coach, I don't have that. Somebody does. Somebody does. Whether it's the bank and business credit, whether it's these grants, whether it's the pitch contest, somebody somewhere has the money you need to build your business. But will you be resilient and tenacious enough? Or as, as John Madden used to say, will you have the stick to enough to go out and be on a relentless search for this money? And that's all it is. But whether it's being profitable or whether it's getting money through grants, startup capital, it's just about being consistent. And we're so inconsistent at times and not the life inconsistent. I'm inconsistent because something happened. More often than not, as women, we get emotionally tied to outcomes. And when it doesn't immediately work out like we think, somebody tell me if I'm telling the truth, we're so quick to give up. And that giving up, starts us from zero every single time, right? So this is a long-term process. Once you get in, you got to stay in and you're going, you're going to win if you stay the course. So it's super important that you guys understand that your businesses are like new babies. And in order for you to grow your business, you got to feed it and it's expensive. So, Again, there's not a day that goes by that somebody don't inbox me and ask me about grants, 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 grants. So this FAQ is kind of going to help you understand that, yes, grants are you. Uh, and pay close attention. Make some notes. Don't get to the end and still be convincing yourself that this money is not. <laughs> Go ahead, Stephanie. She said, I got my notes. That this money is not for you because it absolutely is. And I just need one more favor. Uh, we have two rules in our community. We have we, one rule is every line, every time. The second rule is invite another woman. Amber has an amazing community that you guys, she struggles to get you guys the information that you need. You guys should be out there inviting 10 and 15 women at a time. Because if somebody had to pay me to come in and do this presentation, if it were not Amber, I'm going to charge five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars to do this presentation because that's what I charge as a speaker. So just understand that you have that level of individual fighting for your life, fighting for your business life, fighting for your next level. I think that's huge. And as women, I don't think we collaborate and partner near enough. And so since we don't work together, we're individually all at the bottom.
Does that make sense? And the more we collaborate, the more we partner, the more we can work together and rise. So first question, do I have to have a business to win a, to win a grant? No, 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 no. I'm going to say this a million times during this presentation. Every grant is different. Some grants will tell you, you don't need a business. All you need is a well thought out idea. They will give you a grant for a well articulated idea. Do you hear me? Do you guys know that Silicon Valley was built on ideas on napkins? Men are going around pitching things on paper that don't exist and getting millions and millions of dollars for it. But here you are with a business and you're scared to ask for money. We got to stop. So every grant is different. Some will say got to have an LLC. Some will say got to have a business license, meaning it's okay if you have a DBA. Some will say, don't, matter of fact, Facebook gives away multiple sets of $40,000 a year to group owners like Amber, and you do not have to have any type of business formation, profit or nonprofit. They say you can take the $40,000 and work to build your business formation. 40 recs, no business paperwork. They look at the fact that you've grown this massive group as proof that you have a viable business idea. So the paperwork is just a technical, technicality. Do I have to have an LLC? No, just went over that. Some may say you do. Some will say you don't. Some won't say. So somebody tell me in the chat, if, if they say business owner and do not say LLC, do you apply or not apply? Yes or no? If they say business owner, but do not say LLC, come on, Ashley, Ursula, no, that's, that's my family right there. Oh, baby, we in every line every time. Because if you don't specify, come on, Jordan, if you don't specify, if they don't say LLC, we get in line. We get in line. If I got a DBA, whatever, I'm going to get in line. So absolutely. Other questions I'm asked, how long do I have to be in business? What do you guys think? What do you think the average time you have to be in business to get a grant? Now, Amber, do you know that's cheap? Now, Amber, you, now you, now you know, now sis, you know that's cheap. <laughs> Can you let the people play? <laughs> that's absolutely correct. In fact, I want to say it was the Botox grant that we looked at and the guidelines were so unspecific that you literally could have went and got your business license that day and applied for the grant. Some will tell you had to be in business by this date, by that date, but don't let that discourage you, right? You keep looking because some of them, don't say at all, meaning you can go get your LLC today and apply for that grant tomorrow. How much money do I have to be making? Do you think you can win a grant if you're not making any money in your business? What do you guys think? I mean, be honest. Do you think you can win a grant if you're not making a dollar in your business? Absolutely. Some of them will even give you options. They will say, are you in pre-revenue? Are you in concept? Are you in fundraising? So they're giving you outs. If you haven't made any money in your business at all, they understand. Because there are there's a flow to creating a business. So no, you don't have to be, some will say maximums. Some will say minimums. If they say a minimum, and it's higher than what you make already, but you're close, apply anyway. If I told you how many people are not applying for these grants, you really wouldn't believe me. So a lot of these grants, we're winning on default. We're winning because nobody else is applying. And we're watching them so close 
we see them extending the deadline. And we know every time they extend the deadline, what does that mean? They don't have enough qualified people applying. Trust me, they want to get rid of this money. Because once you win, they run them checks quick. Like, once you win, you probably get that money in the next 7 to 10 business day. That if they say the grant closes on March 31st, they're going to reach out to you by April 2nd to get your account information. By April 5th to the 15th, your account, you're going to get your money. So if they say you got to be making at least $25,000 and you made fifteen twenty, dollars what's the worst they can say is no? But the best they can say is yes. So apply anyway. Do they check your credit? What do you guys think? You need credit for everything, right? In all of my grant applications, I have never had any of them check my credit. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. Have not. Now, when you start dealing with loans and things like that from the SBA, yes, I think they want you to have a minimum of like a 550, 600. It's not bad. Now, do I suggest just, just put a pin in this. I suggest every woman here, if your credit is not up to par, I suggest you fix it. And I suggest you start building business credit ASAP. We need to stop competing without the funding and the financing we need. Business credit, that's your holdover money. That allows you to go invest in something until it pays you off and then you can pay your credit off. We got to stop trying to compete with our personal credit. But do they check your credit? Absolutely not. Here's another one. And, and, and anybody on here international? I'm just curious because I'm going to talk about y'all. Is there anybody on here international? Because I'm about to talk about y'all. So there's not a day that goes by that I don't get somebody international and they, they, they borderline have an attitude because I specialize in U S grants and why? Cause I'm in the U S I mean, if I was in another country, I probably specialize in some other, if I was in Angora, I probably specialize in Angorian grants. If I was in Spain, I probably specialize in grants for the Spaniards, but I'm not, I'm in the United States. That being said, are there international grants? Yes or no? What do you guys think? Come on now. There are. There are. I had a lady in Canada on my application working session the other night, and she's like, it ain't never no grants for Canada. I said, hold up, ma'am. Let me get through my presentation. Bust out my search engine, Uncle Google, and found her like three grants off the rip. You, ma'am, you must ain't looked, ma'am, because all I did was type in Canadian grants for women, and I got some grants instantly, a grant that she could apply for on the spot. So it's almost like this. We want to be wrong about grant money. Does that make sense what I'm saying? We don't want it to exist because to me, you're either that was either you know, you you didn't want it enough to go search. So it's just easier to say, I don't qualify or it doesn't exist. Then just go look for it. Uh, is this for no nonprofit leaders? What I do is not for nonprofit leaders. The grants, me and my team write, and we write your grants for you. If we teach a grant writing class, and we teach a startup capital class, none of the things we do is for nonprofit because I don't have a nonprofit. And I don't suggest women have a nonprofit until they make their first seven figures. And I'm just adamant about the fact that why you going to make a nonprofit and you ain't profiting, you're going to fool around and be the nonprofit. You're going to fool around and be in the soup kitchen. You're going to fool around and be in the... So we need to be profit focused. So this is not for nonprofit leaders, uh, not the kind of grants that, that me and my team source. What kind of grants are there? So let me let me offer a point of clarity. People will come to me and say, I'm a baker. Is there a grant for me? I'm a cobbler. Is there a grant for me? I'm the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. Is there a grant for me? And that's not how grants work. 
Grant work by, by industry, by industry sometimes. sometimes. I don't know where that's coming in from. Grants work by industry sometimes, but going back to what I said initially, grants are more often, right, for your gender, for your race, for your uh, uh your your sexual orientation, depending on what's important to that brand. I could never see Abercrombie and Fitch doing a grant for Black women. Come never gonna shop there. They had enough for me. Absolutely. Eddie Bauer, nothing. Nothing for me. So more often than not, grants are a company's way of rewarding the people in their community. So the bigger the company, uh, the more diverse the grant is probably gonna be. MasterCard does grants for everybody from African-American women to LGBTQ to women in general. Comcast did have a grant just for minorities. Then opened it up for women. Verizon's grants for everybody. Botox's grant. Botox do a, tr a trick in there because they're offering the grant in partnership with I Fund Women. But if you look at the details, men can apply too. So that's where that reading the, the fine print comes in. Because when we look, men can apply. It did not say. I'm not saying there are no grants for nonprofits. Please don't, please don't mutilate my words. What I said was, me and my team do not specialize in nonprofit grants. To me, that's a whole nother process. It's a whole nother structure. And I'm I'm the type of person that if I want to do something, I want to be great. And since I don't have a nonprofit, I don't have a baseline for looking for those grants, applying for those grants. I don't have clients with nonprofits. And so I don't do nonprofits grants. So there are a lot of grants out there for nonprofits. I don't look for them. I don't source them. And again, don't even recommend especially nowadays with these celebrities doing their own nonprofits, you used to could get a lot of funding that way. But now these celebrities are using their own nonprofits as their tax shelter. So unless you have a viable fundraising idea, then charge people for what you're offering until you can afford to give it away for free. That's just my motto. Um, so again, grants are out there. Offered by everybody. Grubhub's going to offer their grants to uh, restaurant owners. Johnny Walker has one that's just for women. So it just depends on the company and the brand affinity that they're trying to build as to who the grants are for. Where can I find grants? Me and my team have a, a grant. We're actually building an a app to notify women as to all of the opportunities that are out there. We have a, a membership where we alert people as to the grants. But guys, the grants are out there everywhere. Like if you make it a part of your day to look for grants that are open right now and to apply for two to three a week, you're going to find two to three grants a week. Uh, how do you find grants? Grants are available by your city. There's a grant out there right now just for Birmingham, Atlanta, New Orleans, D.C. There's only like six cities that can apply for this grants. So grants are, are available by your city. Uh, there are grants available for your county. Uh, Kansas last year, Louisiana, a lot of, oh, California had a lot of grants that were just for specific counties in their region. Uh, there are grants for your, your state. There are grants for regions. I just ran into a, a, I don't know who sponsored that grant, but right now it's just for the West Coast. And then they roll to the Midwest, and to the East Coast, and to the South. So grants are out there by every search criteria you could even think to look up. Do I need a business plan? So that, my friends, is a conundrum. 
They don't say anywhere you have to have a business plan in order to apply for, for a grant. So the official answer is no, you don't. But what I find is because you guys don't have a business plan, you don't know how to articulate your business model in a way that shows viability and profitability. What I mean by that, you paint your business picture the way you see it, but you don't put, is this a good idea and is it going to make money in your story? And a business plan forces you to do that. Does that make sense what I'm saying? They are looking for, they 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 do want to know your brand story. They, they do want to know why you started your business, why it's important, how it's going to impact the world. But at the end of the day, if you don't tell them how it's going to make some money, because that is what qualifies you like as a business, if you don't tell them what, what makes you different from your competitor, what's going to give you staying power, all of the things that you have to really deep thought through in a business plan, then that's why a lot of people miss out. Do you need a business bank account? Uh, that's another conundrum. You know, the big question is if you're in business, why don't you have one? That's the big question. When they go to fund you, you are more often than not going to need a business bank account unless they told you up front you don't need one. Facebook will put the money wherever you tell them to put it. Facebook say you give me your uh, baby mama bank account. I'll put the money over there. I don't care. But more often than not, they want to align the money they're sending to the organization that won the money. Do you need an investment plan? That's another great area. We write business plans and investment plans for clients. That's part of the services we offer. What we've found is that most of you don't know how to tell the story of why you need the money without leaving yourself out of it. So let me just say, say up front, once you win this money, the mass majority of them are not going to come back and ask you to justify what you did with it. They're not. So once you win the money, you're free and clear. But when y'all come to me, y'all say stuff like, I need a grant because I ain't paid my rent in three months and I'm about to get put out. They don't want to align with anybody like that because they want to go brag on you. And if they give you this grant money, sure, it may pay your rent temporarily, but, you know, what, what are you going to do after this money dries up? And they're looking at that. So if you're in that dire need of the money, then what's the tr chances that you're running a sustainable business? They're looking at that. So you have to tell them the story of not only what you would do with the money, but how this would uh, forward your progress, forward your growth, uh, impact your ability to help more people. You have to be able to articulate that story. And can I just tell you guys for the record now, don't don't let me let don't let me get it twisted. I love women and I've served women faithfully for the last 12 years. I have served. But y'all some horrible storytellers, okay? Y'all some y'all is some terrible, terrible storytellers. Because what happens is you go down the emotional lane and you never come back. And what you realize is that from a business perspective, these people more often than not don't care. So you have to have the ability to weave your story with the numbers, right? And make it make sense. One more, more flaw. What my sisters do, us. We don't brag and it kills us. We don't brag. We don't bring our brag story. We don't bring our A game. We bring our minimalistic, I really don't believe in myself, I wish I could, I think I can, train engine story, and it's not enough. You got to bring your Wonder Woman, invisible rope having, invisible helicopter flying, you got to bring your superhero story to the game. So you got to know all of the great things that you've done and be able to recount them so that they can consider you a viable candidate for this. They want the strongest candidate. 
put it that way. And even if you're not strong right now, you have to have the ability to paint yourself as strong. And that's where we struggle. So do you have to have a formal investment plan? No, but almost everybody is going to ask you for a mini investment plan that shapes how you're going to spend the money. And when we write grants for people, we write that piece too, because we know it makes sense. Do I have to have a marketing plan? Is, 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 is any of these plans, all of this planning stuff, is it starting to ring a bell? Y'all will plan your trip to the grocery store, but you won't plan your business. These things need to be professional and they need to be in writing. You almost can't make your own business plan. You almost can't make your own investment plan. You almost can't make your own marketing plan, a profit plan, because you know, you know that nothing that you don't have in writing is going to happen. You got to write the vision. That, that's part of it. That becomes your guide. So you can't just say, this is my goal. You got to have a plan for it. So do you need a marketing plan? Not officially, but part of your ability to describe to them how and where you're going to make your money in this business is wrapped up in their marketing plan. The mass majority of the reason that women are inconsistent in their earnings is because they don't have a marketing plan. Does everybody know what a marketing plan is? Does everybody know what a marketing plan is? If you don't, it's okay. I'm going to give you a, a 60 second rundown on what a marketing plan is. So if you don't say, I don't, let's go on and get the rundown so you're not running around out here and not knowing. That's another thing, ladies. It's okay to say, I don't know. I made millions of business online, uh, millions of dollars online over the years, and I still ask questions every day. You know why? Because you can't embarrass me. I don't care. Long as I get the answer, who care? I don't give a damn what you think about me. You can think, oh, that was a dumb question. I'm going to take that answer and go make some money. So we don't care what you think, okay? At the end of the day, and if y'all could get up off of, um, if y'all could get up off of that whole wonder what they're going to say about me when I leave thing, you'd be better off. So just let them go. If they're not paying bills in your household, like, who cares? If I'm a farmer, and we all are, let me give you the rundown, 60 seconds. If we're a, if I'm a farmer and we all are, in order for me to make money, I've got to plant my seeds. Your seeds are your gifts and your talents. Now, when I plant my seeds, it's conducive to when they grow. So I've got to plant my seeds at the right time in order to make sure that I can harvest them at the right time. So I'm not going to plant my pumpkin seeds in January and be running around with a whole bunch of pumpkins I need to take to market in July. When last time you seen anybody on the girl on my porch eating a pumpkin in July? No. Sometimes it's not that your product is wrong. It's that you're trying to sell it in the wrong season. Or you're trying to sell it in the wrong place. If I take a cup of water to the desert, man, that water is invaluable. But if I got a cup of water next to a water hydrant where people can go, or water fountain where they can go drink for free, that cup of water becomes worthless. So it is the when and where and what you're going to sell and how. How are you going to show up? What platforms are you going to use? Uh, what's going to be your content? What's going to be your lead magnet? What days of the week are you going to offer it? How much are you going to sell it for? It's the equivalent of a farmer taking his product to market. And that's why it's called a marketing plan. Because there's nothing as age old as I'm going to take these eggs to market. I'm going to take this milk to market. So it is taking your gifts and talents to the masses. When am I going to do it? And a profit plan is nothing more than how much do I expect to make? So do you need a profit plan with grants? No. But most of y'all don't have a profit plan, which means you're not profitable. 
which means the story you tell in these grants is not one of, I'm here to make a profit, which impacts your ability to win these grants. Is this all making sense, y'all? I, I, I try to be a great teacher. I try to make it make sense. You know, because there's people that will talk all above your head and this, that, and the other. I'm going to break it down like four flats on a Cadillac. Does this make sense, right? So these plans are essential to your ability to tell a great story. Do you need a grant writer? Not necessarily. People hire us to write their grants, but you don't necessarily need one. But here's, here's me. I stay in my lane. I've written hundreds of books. When I say hundreds, I'm not playing. I've written thousands of course curriculums. You know, I've written thousands of outline. I've done 8,000 live streams. And every one of them live streams had an outline to it so that I could know what I was talking about. So I'm a writer. I started off in this game writing. I've written business course content. You know, you name it, I've written it. If I wasn't a writer, I would not write my own stuff. So you have to, and, and this is something I tell all women, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Is it in your wheelhouse? Is it in your zone of greatness? If not, what's going to happen is you're going to be out there trying to write them. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to start getting your feelings hurt, and then you're going to stop. Am I right? You're going to go out there and you're going to be like, I can do this. And you're going to be all pumped up and you're going to get in there and they're going to ask you some uncomfortable stuff and you're going to stutter a step with your words and you're going to give up. <clears throat> so you have to go whatever path is the best path for you to stay on course. Now, if you can't afford to hire a grant writer, you need to get out there and apply for grants every single day. Because you will eventually get better. If writing is in your wheelhouse, you will eventually get better at asking these, answering these questions. If you do your research, if you study, it's not, you're not going to just get better by thugging your way through. You're not going to just, you're going to have to add some, we don't learn through osmosis, right? You're going to have to do some studying, but eventually you will get better if you stay the course. Do you need a professional video? Hmm. You don't need a professional video, but a lot of grants ask you for a video. When we write your grant responses, we give you an outline because here again, y'all tend to ramble. Have you ever sit and listen to women introduce themselves at networking event when the person get them 30 seconds and they know, they know they go way over 30 seconds and most of it is just blah, blah, blah. You can't do that in a video. In a grant video, if they give you 30 seconds, it better be 29. If they give you 60 seconds, it better be 59. And they better get what they're looking for. So if, if you spend the first 59 seconds talking about your name is Sally Mae, you got three kids and a dog named Ruff, you was married in 1987, y'all know how y'all do it. Y'all know how y'all, look, look, I spend my time with thousands of women. And I'm like, okay, here we go. So it, you got to have your elevator pitch. You got to bring your A game. You got to stick to the facts. And you got to get in and out in the time allotted. You can make the, the camera with your iPhone. They don't care. They want to see the real you. Matter of fact, going back to writing grants, they don't care about uh, dangling participles. They don't care about conjugated verbs. They don't care about grammar, spelling. But you better have your business model correct. You better have your brand story right. They better know how you impact. They're looking at the story. Because they know we're not, you know, a professional writer. But you, they're going to know if you're telling the story or not. What do I say in order to win? Again, it's the, it's the same things. Number one. Can you tell your brand story? That's what your why. What got you here? Write that down. That's number one. Number two, what's your business model? Is it something that's going to make money? Is it something that doesn't, do you know the difference between you and your competition? What makes you different? 
Number three is community and world impact. What are you giving back to the masses around you? And number four, what are you going to do with the money when you win? Every grant has a different uh, grading rubric, but that's the baseline for every single one of them I've ever seen. So that's how the grant awardees are determined. One more thing, one more thing, your social media presence. Do you have a website? Do you have an Instagram? Do you have a LinkedIn? Do you have a Facebook? Do you have a Twitter? They're going to, they're going to ask. And they're going to go look. So for those of you who are inconsistent in social media, but say you're a business owner, they're going to judge you on that. They're going to judge you on that. Kara said, now that I'm thinking about free money, I can see how to use it for a minute. But you feel, once that's covered, how do you think you should spend the money on, other than what would qualify for a grant? Is that... Can I apply for money to hire a coach to get clarity on that or go on a retreat for myself to dream up how to grow my... You know what? I'll let her open the uh, mic if you don't mind at the end, Amber, because that was a lot and I didn't really get it. Um, Are grants guaranteed? Absolutely not. They will tell you the terms and conditions. They will tell you the application. They, they're, they're not. And if they go out to social media and see you did something that they don't like. And that's another reason you got to keep your nose clean on social media. And let me just say this for the record. Your, your personal Facebook is not personal when you're a business owner. You think you can be club Sally over here and business Sally over there, but we still see you drinking at the club just because you over here uh, and it say your name doesn't mean people are not lucky. So just, just realize that. Okay. Uh, what can I do with the money? Once they give it to you, let me just say this. Anything business related, including pay yourself. The mass majority of you are not paying yourself payroll, which is a fatal flaw. If you're not paying yourself payroll, that means you're not making no money. So how do you justify working in a business and not making any money. So question, if you had a job, a J-O-B, would you be okay with going to work there and them not giving you a check? You wouldn't, would you? So why are you okay with being a business owner and not generating revenue? I'm going to just leave that right there for you to feel on that a little bit later. Just, just, just later on, when you ain't got nothing else to do, heat that up like a cookie and eat it with a warm glass of milk and just lit the waves because you should be holding yourself accountable for generating revenue. What is the best way to win? Write the best story and apply often. Write the best story and apply often. Are there grants for my industry? Yes. The only industries they don't fool with, I'll give them to you. The sex trade, So if you're a lady of the night, you ain't get no grants. The, the gun industry, ammunition, no grants. Anything in the marijuana field, no grants. Anything legal, unethical, immoral, no grants. So, I mean, that's kind of the standard. If it's on the line, no grants. But every grant will tell you. Because some of the vodka companies will give grants to liquor store owners and club owners. So, you know, again, it just depends. Are there grants for my demographic? Exactly. There are. I had a lady saying, all the grants are for black women. No, they're not, mama. I'm a black woman, so that's the grants. I let goes back to reticular activation, what we talked about earlier. Why would I be looking for uh, grants for uh, uh, what's it called? Vikings. I'm not a damn Viking. It wouldn't make sense. So the grants that pop up in my vision are grants for 
uh, black women, but because I look for so many, I see the ones for LGBTQ. I see internet. I see everything. But the ones I remember are, of course, the ones for women and the ones for black women because that's what I, what, what I am. But there are grants for everybody. When can I apply for grants? This is the this is the stickler. A lot of people miss out because they miss the deadline. And this is why community is important. One day could be the difference between you applying for forty, fifty thousand dollars and not. Uh, we went through last night. There's a grant that uh, uh that uh the deadline is the thirtieth. There's three more grants that the deadline is the um the deadline is the thirty first. So these grants are always in and out, in and out, and without a community to kind of uh help you keep track, it, it becomes very, very difficult. So that's why I said you guys have to stick together. You um, you really, really do have to do your part. And, and it's work. But it's worth it. I'm looking for the links to send to Amber now because we're wrapping up. Are grants easy money? They're not. They're not. It's like everything. There's no several bullets, guys, when it comes to money. So the women I eat meet are either on two ends of the spectrum. They either think that grants are easy money. Oh, it's easy money. I need a grant. I'm getting put out of my house. I need a grant. No, it's not that. Or they don't think they're eligible and they don't apply at all. So I need you guys to be in the middle. I need you guys to realize that, number one, it's not easy money. But number two, it is money that you could be winning. You really could. If you apply yourself. Do you have to have employees? You know, <laughs> that's a long story. But I'm going to make it short. Uh, everybody in the chat, I want you to put how many employees you have. Put the number of employees you have in the chat. Uh, somebody says, Z how do you have no employees? How do you have no employees? Because you got to always at least count yourself. Amber, I ain't asked you about no contractors. So if I don't ask you, contractors are employees, right? So, so see, 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 see you, you do, you doing too much, and that's what women do. If they say employees and they don't say W two, you list the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. You list the web designer, the graphic design artist. You list everybody. Because they're your employees. Now, if they if they say W-2, if they say full-time, if you got somebody that's full-time but a contractor and they don't say W-2 full-time, you count them. You count them. So, again, here's one of those things where you guys are, are, are painting a less than adequate picture. If you got an admin, you count them. You got a graphic design person, you count them. You got a business consultant, that's an employee, you count them. You count everybody that makes money when you make money. Does that make sense? Uh, do I have to live in the U.S.? We talked about that. Every grant is different. There's definitely uh, um, there's definitely grants for everybody. How can I get notified? Again, that's why we're working on the app because there's really no automatic way. You know, unless you set up your own uh, calendar, unless you set up your own system, 
in my community, we we work to remind the members, you know, because that's why uh, people miss out. Um, do I have to be a woman, minority, veteran, LGBTQ? Does it, not at the same time, no, you don't. And that's pretty much what I have. I think those are like the biggest misconceptions. Those are the biggest questions I get asked. I know it seems like a lot, but it's just really to me so very common sense. So, Amber, I'm going to give the bow back to you if you want to open it up for questions real quick. Yep. <clears throat> for anybody who has the, uh, a few extra minutes, uh, feel free to raise your hand so that we're not talking over each other. And uh, I'll unmute you. Girl, you got so much decorum over here, girl, in my community. I'd be like, yeah, y'all got any questions? <laughs> 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 it don't be no protocol, girl. Uh, <laughs> Anybody? My Facebook is my name. You can find me under Danya Winningham. And she's very active. That's actually how I found her. Um, and for anyone who's interested in the Botox cosmetic grant that she referred to earlier in the call, uh, just check your chat. The Verizon grant is there as well. And then as she mentioned, um, let's see, do you recommend the new business road test to establish a convincing case for your project? I'm not sure what that means. I ain't never heard of a business road test. I know that I've seen tens of thousands of businesses over the years. More often than not, I could look at a business and tell you if that business is gonna make money or not. I mean, and most business consultants that do this for a living can. But I mean, you can do it for yourself. Let me tell you how. Every business is based on the problem that they solve. If you don't understand the problem you solve and for who, you don't have a business. Everything from this chair that I'm sitting in to this bottle of water that I'm drinking to the camera that I'm looking at you on is solving a problem. Why is this bottle of water solving a problem? Because I don't want to go to the hydrant every single time and put my lips on the, so they put water in bottles, right? <laughs> and why is this chair solving a problem? Because I don't want to sit on the floor all day. So it's solving a problem, right? And everything that you think about that's a problem that you don't see an immediate resolution for, that's an opportunity to make money. I'm going to tell you this story. There was a lady who she had on a necklace like this made out of pearls and she had it on um at church and her little baby was teeth in and biting all on the pearls where the necklace broke and you know what happened you know what happened all them pearls went all over the church so she's she's of course super embarrassed but in that embarrassment she said you know what first of all those beads weren't really good for my baby because i don't know what that costume jewelry was made out of. But I couldn't be the first person this has happened to. I'm going to make a necklace that also doubles as a teething ring on a tethered rope that can't be broke. And she ended up, I don't know if you know the story, Stephanie, she ended up making millions. She had celebrities where so the necklaces were nice, but they were literally teething rings that couldn't be broken. Every problem that you have, that somebody else saw that problem for you. So stop being the consumer and start looking at the world to see what problems exist. That's how I create products. That's how I create services. That's why I make money. I knew that women were struggling with startup capital. I knew that women needed the money more than anybody. And once I helped my community, I said, well, let me just help, help other women too. 
And that's how this whole brand was born. And I have about five or six brands and every brand was born out of, hmm, why ain't nobody doing it? And then I go yeah. to my community and I say, y'all struggling with that too? And they say, yeah. And I'm like, well, who's fixing it? And I'm like, nobody. I'm like, so I'll fix it. Find the gap and fill it. Absolutely. Y'all don't have Absolutely. no, and that's another thing. When I come off that mic and I ask, do people have questions? Don't nobody be having no questions. Crickets. Right? And they just be just silent as mice. All right. So for people who want to work with you to write the business plan, to write the grant, how do they do that? They can schedule a call and it's not a brain pick and search because I will shift you off that call very quick. It's at pink and paid call bit.ly slash pink and paid call. Did everybody get that? I'm gonna put it in the chat and let okay. and let Great. me know definitely you came from Amber's team. And uh, keep an eye out too. I'll be sending out emails um, as well as letting people know in the chat and in the event um, that she is also hosting a conference in Atlanta in May, mid-May. And you can attend virtually, you can attend in person. When I tell you this woman saved my business, she saved my business. Oh, I don't take credit for that, baby. You saved your own business. Well, but you led the way, and I'm so grateful. <laughs> Don't do that, bud. We all need help. <laughs> we all need yeah. anybody She's that legit. says they don't need help. They they a lie. They they turn lies. And the faster uh -huh. you get it, the better off you are. And yeah. sometimes you may think one of my clients says, "You got to serve your way, work your way, or pay your way." And you may say, well, I can't afford, I don't have the money, and I'm not going to start crying because I'm not cute when I cry. I ain't got no hair. <laughs> but, you know, Amber has always been so welcoming to me. And when she first mentioned me, you know, I want to partner, I want to share this information with my community. I'm like, well, how much it costs? Let me work it in the budget because I just expect to pay you know, for every opportunity. And when she said nothing, I said, well, shit, you ain't charging nobody. Oh, no, nah, girl, we got to talk. Uh, because I just want you to know what value you bring to the world. And that's reciprocated in money. Yeah. And and for every woman here, don't ever be, I want you to I'll be unapologetic in charging your worth. I want you to be unapologetic because people pay for everything else. They buy these expensive shoes and these designer bags. And when it comes to you, they want a nickel and dime. But that's because that's not your target, love. That's because they don't really want what you have. They just don't want to tell you no. So they really hoping that if they get the, the, the amount small enough, you'll just go away. But you're so anxious to work that you end up shutting yourself. So. You know, that's yes. just my message to all women is just know your worth. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with Amber. I have an award ceremony in Atlanta. And when I first told my community, nominate yourself for this award. It's great. Brand credibility is great for your business. They were like, nominate myself. I said, oh, my God. I know I ain't been <laughs> over here all these years. And y'all still don't get that a closed mouth don't get fed. Sometimes if you don't nominate yourself, and a lot of these people you see out there, winning this award and that award, they're nominating themselves, boo. They're they not waiting on somebody. And that's our problem as women. We're waiting on somebody to save us, and they're not. We're waiting on somebody to appreciate us, and they're not. And then when we do all this work thinking that it's going to bring this automatic appreciated, when we're not appreciated, we get bitter. So I learned something from my mother-in-law. Every anniversary, every Christmas, and every birthday, her children get a list of what she wants. <laughs> you can buy this or this. <laughs> Don't bring me no macaroni uh, crafts. Don't bring me no stinky perfume. She gives them the exact brand, the exact store to go get it from, the exact size. 
And I said, oh my God, that is so brilliant. It keeps you from getting 18 ugly sweaters, 15 ugly robes, a vacuum cleaner that you pissed off about. Because for a while, <laughs> I was getting appliances. And I'm like, oh, wait, what the hell? What? But y'all not finna keep getting me dust busters around here and me be happy. You know what I'm saying? What What you trying to say? Getting me pots and pans. What you saying? Go cook something. I be mad. So how do you keep from getting mad? You open your mouth and you articulate what it is. Yep. That Absolutely. you want. And we don't even do that in our life. So challenge accepted. Anyone who is interested in attending that um, event in Atlanta, be it in person or virtual, I'm going to be sending out a link. If you would just add my name where you heard about it, Amber Powers, the group that you uh, found <laughs> this. <laughs> the group that and you not found. Not that she pointed at herself. Girl, Amber is so funny to me. <laughs> Women business owners supporting women business owners um, definitely show up in there and uh, this will definitely be a replay for people who weren't able to make it or if you want to watch it again, let it sink in. Um, and as I think Kara pointed out earlier, if you want to save the chat, there are three dots at the bottom of the chat, click those three dots and click save chat and it will save to your computer so that you have all of that information. Any final parting words, coach? I mean, just know that there's, I mean, I, I tell women all the time, I was giving them the numbers on how many new millionaires are created every year. And that could be you. Yep. That could be you. And nobody's counting you out but you, right? So if you don't have a million dollar profit plan, that's why you're not a millionaire. You don't have a million dollar yep. marketing plan. That I mean, you really have to just leave the house with that intent. Like when I, wake up every day. My goal is to build multi-million dollar businesses. That is just flat out my goal. And every day it doesn't work out right. It, but more days work out right than don't. And so I stay the path. I'm consistent. Yep. And that's why we generate a lot of revenue. That's it and that's Absolutely. all. We're not special. We're not any more gifted than you. You're gifted. You're beautiful. You're resourceful. You solve shit for everybody else. Solve your own problems. Take care of yourself. Put yourself first. Be unapologetic about what you charge. And it'll all work out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Coach. I am grateful as always. And um, Ashley, if you open the chat, she's having trouble finding how to save. You have to open the chat first. At the bottom of the chat, the white area with the little smiley face. There's three buttons there. Click those. They very and like click save chat. Yeah. They very like. <laughs> they are. They are. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for participating. Thank you for showing up for yourself. Um, as Coach said, when you start acting like a millionaire is when you start walking the path to being one. Absolutely. So um, take care. Have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. And we'll see you next time. Thanks, Amber.